Hey everybody, so Dark and Darker has released back on Steam. The response from everybody has been mostly negative, which is to say the review scores are now mostly negative. They're on track to reach overwhelmingly negative if things continue the way they are. So that's basically what we're going to be talking about here. Dark and Darker for the entire video. We're going to be talking about the history of it. We're going to be talking about why people are giving it such poor review scores as well as we're giving my own opinion on the game and we're going to be talking well probably for about as long as it takes for me to talk about all this so uh you know when i make these sorts of videos and it's just sort of me talking about something doing a long rant that you guys can listen to i always like to remind you guys you you can just listen along um some people say that these videos tend to be very long and they do actually tend to be very long that's because i have a list in front of me that you can sometimes see me looking at i have a list in front of me on things that i want to go over throughout the video but i don't really have a script or anything like that so right for now we're going to be talking about dark and darker this is a game that I put a lot of time into back uh, when it had its early preview period. And then I put 16 hours into it in the last two days. Uh, I put eight hours into it because it kind of released later in the day, randomly. And then I went to sleep, put eight hours more into it. Uh, the thing with Dark and Darker is that you kind of need to know what the game is. Obviously, I think, I think if you discuss any game, you need to know what it is. So the idea of Dark and Darker is you have very slow paced combat that's the idea at any rate uh you have very few ranged weapons you're mostly melee your characters aren't very quick you have D, &D style combat swords shields armor things like that you have some spell casters but the general idea is you have dungeons and dragons style combat you've got your warrior your barbarian uh so it's fighter barbarian thief or maybe it's a rogue now wizard warlock uh all, all that sort of dnd &D stuff and you, you basically bring those classes in and then you run through a dungeon you're trying to get as much loot as you can in that dungeon and then you're trying to leave with that loot so that you can continue to have that loot with you the map will have many chests on it. It will have other players. The other players will try to kill you. It will have lots of monsters. The monsters will try to kill you. You're generally trying to kill the monsters to get their loot. That's generally how the game is played. One of the uh, prevalent features of the game is that it's dark. And in fact, often even darker. It is a very dark game. You need many light sources. This is one of the things that causes the game to be very slow paced. Enemies can be hiding in the shadows and often shadows can even hide enemy monsters meaning that you need to kind of carry around a torch, use torches, uh, and, and just kind of go slow with it. Um, unfortunately, it did have a lawsuit. Uh, Iron Mace was being sued by their former employers for a breach of contract. Now, I'm not going to go that far into it, but the game was briefly removed from Steam during that. The charges have now been dropped, and the game is free to go back on Steam. So it has now been just released on Steam. An extraction melee game thing. I don't know what you want to call it. I mean, if you're, you're looking at the gameplay, so you'll, you'll kind of understand the idea here. It's, it's not too complicated. The gameplay itself is not too complicated. Everything you do in this game takes a long time. Opening a chest takes a while. Opening a door takes a while. Killing enemies takes a while. Um... It's just a very slow-paced uh, D and D style combat game, and and it's not you know it doesn't really need to be more complicated by that. So despite that, and despite the fact that it initially garnered such a positive reception, is now released on Steam, and as of now, uh, has a thirty-nine percent uh, positive review score. How did it get to be a nut thirty-nine percent? Okay, so Iron Mace, after putting this game back on Steam has had some problems this game was initially posted as a free-to-play game and they did not really some people will argue but i would say in my opinion they did not fairly show people that what you are getting as a free-to-play game is mostly just a demo you are basically just getting a demo of the game and the full game costs $30. $30, that is not actually regional pricing either. So some countries just basically can't afford the game. So the game releases free-to-play randomly, and it's not free-to-play at all. It's not even close to free-to-play. But let me explain why it's not really free-to-play. The game, as I just mentioned, is about getting loot, then using that loot 
kind of like uh, imagine like PUBG or Fortnite or anything like that, but imagine the items were significantly more rare and you were expected to take them out of the mission into the next mission. The idea is you don't want to take every fight, you don't want to die definitely, and rare will slowly be accrued. You can stash that loot and then you can bring it into future missions in order to make yourself more powerful. Well, here's where we get into the problem with this. With the current free-to-play system, free-to-play players are only allowed into one game mode. That one game mode only allows you to use uh, white rarity items. As you imagine, in most games, white rarity just means it's a common item. If you find any magical, rare, unique, legendary, epic items, uh, they will sit in your stash and you literally can never take them on any mission. Ever. You literally can never use them until you pay the $30 to access the other game mode. So that's an odd choice. Very much an odd choice. Uh, as of right now, there is literally no incentive for anyone to continue to play the game if you're a free to play player. By that, what I mean is all that loot that you are slowly farming, all those things you're slowly gathering and, and putting into your stash, you will literally never be able to use them. No matter how much you grind, no matter how much you try, um, no matter how good you get at the game, you will never be able to use that loot that you're getting, uh, which definitely was an interesting design decision. Earlier, I mentioned that it is D&D style combat with eight different, sorry, nine different classes now. The later classes are very unique and very fun, and you'd often want to play them. Free-to-play players can only play one character. That's it. They have they've they have one character file. If they want to play a different class, they need to delete that character and make a new one, losing you all your loot, losing you all your leveling progress. Uh, I should mention that characters do have levels. You do have four perks you can get. Um, by level 15, you've maxed your perks. You have two abilities. You, you have access to every ability. Generally, you want every character to be level four. Sorry, uh, you want every character to be level 15 so you can access every perk. So you only have access to missions where you cannot use your loot, and you only have access to one class at a time unless you want to delete that character, then level a new character for probably five-ish hours to get them to level 15, so you actually have access to all the perks. This has basically made it so every free-to-play player will slowly come to realize as they play the game Every single free-to-play player will slowly realize that everything they're doing, all the things they're doing within this genre, are all wasted. All those items you're stashing are wasted. Uh, all the gold you're storing is wasted. Everything is wasted. Leveling your character beyond level 15 doesn't do anything. You don't get more stats. You don't get anything. The game is supposed to be somewhat balanced, where a character cannot just be level 9,000 and run in and one-shot people. They're balanced entirely on their gear. If you die and your gear remains on the ground, then that gear is gone, and you'll have to use either new gear from your stash or pick up uh, some gear from the map. So, do you understand why this game is being so negatively reviewed? You, they are basically offering people a cake, and they're saying... Look, guys, this cake will have cosmetics, and you can buy the cosmetics, and you can buy the additional races. You're allowed to play humans, and also there's no cake, because there's no game. I, I don't really know a better way to put this. I don't really know a better way to phrase this. The game fundamentally doesn't work in the free-to-play system. Here's the second problem. As many people have continued to play the game, they might have noticed that changes to core gameplay have totally ruined the pacing of the game. Uh, this is something that I noticed really quick as I was playing the game, because you'll notice the round timers went from 30 minute round timers to 15 minute round timers. For those of you wondering, imagine playing PUBG or Fortnite or any of those sorts of games. Uh, imagine in the round times are 15 minutes. They also removed the circle. There is no more circle um, forcing anyone to go into each other. That means that the majority of your gameplay is spent, you load into a round, 15 minute timer, you loot a room, you'll maybe be down to a 10 minute timer, you'll root two or three more uh, rooms, and after you have some items, you can probably clear those second rooms quicker. So after you're done with your third room, five minutes are remaining, at the five minutes it gives you a warning. You need to now escape from the level. 
With two minutes remaining into the game, you start taking periodic damage. When time runs out, your character is dead. Therefore, you get no loot extracted from this game. So, effectively, you have 13 minutes with two minutes of overtime. So, you really only have 13 minutes of gameplay. Which of you will spend the first about five minutes of it just looting the first room, clearing the first skeletons and things like that? The enemy mobs take time to kill it takes time to open chests it takes time to open doors this game is a perfect example of how changing a few core balancing concepts a few core numbers can completely break a game in my opinion this game should and, and really is a textbook example of developers not really understanding something messing with one of the core fundamentals of a game and having the game completely break when i mentioned earlier about the light um, the thing about you putting out torches, maybe hiding, maybe trying to find a vantage point, hiding above enemies, trying to catch opposing players and ambush them. Maybe the fact that you would light a torch and you would use it and try to find other players trying to sneak up on you. All of this generally is pointless. There's simply not enough time in each match for any of this to play out. By the time you can actually be set up and in a position that you've got all your loot and you your time to start fighting other players, there's so little time left in the game that if you and another group or another single player end up getting in a skirmish position where you and them are maybe throwing ranged attacks at each other, you're trying to jockey back and forth, maybe get into each other, it's going to be really quick and then the game is over. Which is to say, you've maybe got two, three, four minutes of jockeying back and forth before you have to start really thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to have to get my loot out. You might be saying to yourself, well, what if you just didn't care about loot? Well, then why are you playing this game? Because, as mentioned earlier, the combat's not really that complicated. The combat is very non-complicated, in fact. And I think the, the, the majority of the interest in the game wasn't, in fact, in running up and left-clicking each other. Because the game, unless you have a shield, uh, does not have a block. The game has only two abilities per character. Some casters can have additional spells and things like that. The abilities tend to not really do anything. They're just actives that give you a passive. So, for example, Barbarian can rage, move a little bit faster, do a little bit more damage, take a little bit more damage. They can shout to get some temporary HP. These aren't fundamentally changing the game. They're just making you better at running up and attacking people. So the, the majority of the excitement in the game was about, you know, having to survive on the map, having to have the circle close in. And that's what happened. The circle would close in until you had to go to a certain area on the map. And you could only escape in that one specific area of the map. So everyone had to go in there and you had to fight each other to get into that area and get off the map. Well, you might be understanding the problem now. You can now escape uh, in many different areas on the map. You can escape in a lot of different positions all over the map, in fact. So... The way the vast majority of my games have ended up playing out is the game starts 15 minutes remaining. I loot my first room, 10 minutes remaining. I maybe move into some other rooms, maybe seven, six minutes remaining. At this point, the five minute timer where it's going to start trying to notify you that you need to start looking for escape routes will start happening. Most escape routes will open about uh, three to two minutes remaining. So at that point, you want to move around the map, try to find an escape route and camp it out. The majority of the time, I don't actually end up fighting other players. Or if I do end up seeing another player, I generally think to myself, it's probably not worth it to try to chase this guy around. Because if I do try to chase this guy around, he's going to run away. Maybe I catch him and then it doesn't really do me any benefit. Uh, it, it's very hard in this game to actually kill people who see you or kill people who are just generally not really trying to fight back. Um, that's always been one of the biggest issues with this game, which I'll, I'll get more into that later. But basically, again, um, there's been no changes to how quickly you open a door, which can be five, six, seven seconds. There's no changes to how quickly you can open a chest, which is up to 10 seconds. Um, healing has been massively nerfed across the board as well. You will constantly find yourself needing to sit down to heal if enemies hit you a couple times. Sitting down to heal can often take like literal minutes of sitting on the floor waiting for your health bar to tick up you don't heal passively you heal by sitting on the floor even health potions um only heal you like 12 of your 100 some hp 
all of this leads to a game where it never feels like you actually have enough time to do anything. So I, I think for a lot of players, they've started to notice that the game just isn't what it used to be. Gone are the days of using doors. Gone are the days of, of, of trying to look through the sea hole in a door to check if there's a group in another room. Often you just have to think to yourself, look, if there's a group in the other room, we'll probably hear them because they're running through the level trying to loot and then get out. I'm running through the level trying to loot and get out. Uh, we're on the normal game mode. Nobody has any loot anyway. The only people who could be trying to PvP on the normal game mode are people who just generally don't care about loot and are just trying to run and kill players. Now, players trying to kill other players is definitely one way to play the game, but with how boring the combat can be once you remove everything else about it, 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 it the, the right way to put it is the entire combat, the entire gameplay of the system, it was a system that all worked together. Everything was slow because it had to be slow. Healing was slow because opening doors was slow. Opening doors was slow because you didn't want people rushing through. You wanted someone to take five seconds to open a door so someone could be waiting in the shadows and try to stab them. You wanted it to take a long time to open a chest so that another group might be able to hear them and ambush them. You could walk to reduce or even remove the entirety of your sounds of, of movement so you could maybe try to walk in and ambush another group, but now you just don't have enough time to do any of this. If you try to sneak up on another group and ambush them, they might just escape from the level before you actually catch up to them. And, and, and that's not even me being facetious. Uh, some of the escapes can start appearing at the five minute timer. If you're trying to stalk and ambush another guy, well, think about it. You start 15 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, you loot your first room. Then you start looking around, you kill some enemies, maybe seven, six minutes, you find an enemy. And then he might just go escape after you creep up on him. And that's it. And that, and that's the game. And then you think to yourself, well, I want to get my loot out. But why do you want to get your loot out? Well, let's talk about this. So you, you might be saying to yourself, okay, this game mode you talked about. You did say if you bought the game for $30, you get a cool game mode. And you do. You actually do get a different game mode if you put in the money and you, um, well, well, if you, if you, if you actually put in the money and you, I mean, it's, it's just money. I mean, it's, it's not like it's effort or time or anything. It's literally just money. I don't, I don't know why I'm trying to say this like is some accomplishment. If you give them 30 bucks, you can use your gear. Now, if you use your gear on missions, you'll rapidly find uh, two different things. One, everyone has better gear than you. That's not me trying to exaggerate. Uh, oftentimes, I will be in an empty mission, a mission where I can just loot. Um, so basically how the game works is you have high roller missions. Let me be clear. High roller missions, you pay 100 gold and you can use any of your gear. So all this gear that you've been doing these normal missions for and, and putting in your stash, these blue items, these purple items, all these cool items, you've been putting them in your stash, right? And now it's time to take them out to the high roller mission. And the vast majority of the time, they'll be empty because very few people are actually, uh, very few people are actually buying this game right now. But let's say it's not empty. I have seen some of them actually go and be pretty cool. <laughs> The enemy mobs are much more difficult in this game mode to try to match the fact that you have much better gear. Some people will struggle with these mobs. Now, veterans who have been playing this game for a year or even two years at this point, they'll crush through the mobs. And the problem here is the skill gap starts being rather ludicrous. Good players not only know what gear is good and what gear to use, but they know how to cheese mobs, how to dodge their attacks, what patterns they have, and they'll know how to clear through them very quickly. Now, because they know how to kill the mobs easier and they know what gear is better, they'll generally be able to kill other people much better simply off those two things, which in turn gets them better gear. Um, the high rolling missions have so many issues, it's actually kind of crazy, but it can be fun because if you die, you lose your permanent loot and that that can be enjoyable i guess i mean I, I had a little bit of fun with it i was playing some high roller missions and i had some good sets of gear and i made it out and i was like oh my god the next time i was about to die and i made it out and i was like yay the next time i i got cheesed by my placement and enemies were attacking me through the wall and i died and that sucked but i always kind of wanted to go back and try more high roller missions until i kind of realized what the meta was see for high roller missions, is you might be noticing in all the different things I'm saying, is you generally don't want to die. You generally want to kill your enemy. What's the best way to kill an enemy? Let's talk about armor. Okay. 
Most people in the high roller missions don't really seem to use armor, much armor or any armor at all. See, here's the problem. Uh, armor makes your character slower because there's very little strategy or anything you can do to, to lock down an enemy. If they are faster than you, then you can't kill them. If they're slower than you, then you can kill them. So everybody needs to max the amount of speed they have. Now, let's play this thought process through the entire way. Everybody wears the least and lowest tier armor they can. Now, I'm not saying they won't wear legendary armor, but they'll wear legendary cloth armor. They'll wear legendary some hat. They're not going to be wearing plate or anything like that. They'll be wearing all the lightest gear they can get. Because if I can manage to outrun the Barbarian, then there's not much that the Barbarian can do to kill me. That's just a simple fact. If the Barbarian can outrun me, then there's not really a whole lot I can do to not die to the Barbarian. So everybody takes off all their gear and everybody runs around. Now everybody dies in one hit because nobody's wearing any real armor. Now, again, you might be wearing your epic or legendary super cloth armor, but at the end of the day, you're, you're wearing really bad armor. You're wearing very, very low armor intended for the squishiest classes, and you're using your legendary super mega weapon. These legendary weapons are going to run around and one to two shot people, as is what frequently we see from a lot of videos and things like that. The, the high rolling meta, the meta once you actually use gear, is to not really use much gear and instead run around and kill people. Well... Here runs into the issue again. So these people that know how to play the game, what do they do? Do they run around in full plate and be a knight in shining armor and take the level slowly? Do they clear each room? Do they use tor No, they got to just sprint through and try to find people and kill them. That's it. That's your strategy. You, you, you sprint through a level. You're running at Mach 7 and they can't kill you because you're faster than them, but you can kill them because you're faster than them. And you probably use some sort of ranged attack, if you have it, a throwable ranged weapon, if you can find it, a bow, if you can, some sort of magic from range, if you can. If you're up against a melee opponent, they can't do anything. They're melee. You're faster than them. That's it. They can't do anything. So you slowly whittle away, and as I mentioned, healing has been nerfed into the ground. So if you hit them with your melee weapon, they die in one hit. But if they don't die in one hit, you're probably just shooting them away the entire time, slowly whittling them away. Does it sound like a fun situation? Especially if you are a high roller and you're a fighter and you've worn your best fighter armor and you want to fight and be a fighter in full fight plate. Well, now stop and think here. Does this sound like a fun experience? You're, you're, you're wearing all your full fighter plate armor and you see a ranger and you think, I can use my sprint ability. And you realize even with your sprint ability, at best, you might be able to match his speed for like a couple seconds. And then the ranger just shoots you with a bunch of arrows. Or you're fighting a druid. You activate your sprint of any roots you. And he summons a treant next to you. And he starts spamming spells on you. Oh, okay. We fight a warlock. And oh, wait, the warlock is also wearing cloth armor. So he's outrunning you. And he's casting dots on you over and over. You fight a mage. And he shoots frost bolts at you, which slow you. And he outruns you again because he's got cloth armor. So the only thing you can really do is try to ambush these people and kill them. But oh wait, because they're moving at Mach 10, because they're moving so quickly, you can't really ever actually trap and kill them unless you catch them perfectly on a wall, which you only have 15 minutes even on High Roller. See, High Roller also has a 15 minute time limit. It does say something like, we remove the timer, which I thought was incredible. Finally, a mission where you get unlimited time. You can take as much time in the world. You can sit down as much as you want. You can keep your composure as much as you want. You can control the lights, turn off, turn off torches as you need them. You can keep your spatial awareness up. And actually, none of that is true because you still have a 15-minute timer. That's true. You still only have 15 minutes. So you clear a room, maybe clear some more rooms. The enemies are now harder. So they take a bit longer to kill. I think there's even more of them, so they'll take longer to kill. And, uh, yeah, boy, that sure doesn't sound fun. So you put in 100 gold, you get a bunch of higher tier loot from the high roller mission, you sell that money, or see, you sell that loot, you make your gold back, and then, and then you go into the next one, and then you go into the next one, until eventually some dude running twice as fast as you runs you down and kills you. And that's the game. I, I would say that perfectly describes the game right now. Now other people can have different opinions on the meta, and other people can have different opinions on the situation. I have heard that some people are doing three 
support comps who have a fighter in full plate being healed by a cleric, being buffed by a bard. I've heard some people try strategies like that, but uh, my only experience with high roller has been duos and solo. And in both duos and solo, all I've run into is people running at Mach 10 using giga damaging two-handed weapons that kind of just one-shot me. So how's the new player experience then? Okay, can we get enough people then into can we get enough people then into the game buying the game perhaps that we can open up the uh high roller environment can we get enough people in the game will this game maintain enough player base to continue to convert people into paying customers the new player experience is absolutely abysmal uh it does keep the gear really really low all new players can only have whites on their first well, on their only, I guess, missions. So any gear you find, you have to manually find. If people are just trying to PvP and they're not looting, then they're going to end up with very uh, under-farmed gear. They're going to be much squishier, and instead of being more geared than you, the people trying to PvP will be less geared than you, which is obviously, uh, that works out in everybody's benefit. But then that means all you're doing is looting, because you, you can't really take the time to PvP. Now, let's talk about the maps here for a second. Because when I say all you do is spend your time looting, let's talk about this for a second. The current maps in rotation are the normal difficulty map, the hard map, and the really hard map. You heard that right. There's no easy map in rotation. Your maps are normal, hard, and harder. The normal map is already pretty difficult for people that don't understand old school kind of combat you hit an enemy you walk out of range of their attack you hit them again you walk out of range of their attack you hit them again some people don't get that some people don't get that sort of old kind of combat so the game puts you in an area and some areas can spawn you in near instant death if you're not amazing at this game already uh that, that's true whether or not people want to deny it i don't think spawning people next to a wraith and a skeleton champion uh is very doable for new players so it spawns you in and you hope that there's not too many enemies nearby you and you hope that there aren't any aggroed onto you already. You don't have any time to learn the game and then you probably die. Because the skeleton runs up, you try to trade blows with him, he takes half your health. You try to trade blows with the next skeleton and you die. Or an archer shoots you and removes the majority of your health bar. This is generally what happens because new players don't really have any understanding of the game. They don't really know what's going on. When the game was originally in its early access, I picked up the game, and because of the circle, and because people had to move in with each other, you couldn't spend as much time looting, that's definitely a big deal. You couldn't just spend, um, you know, 10 minutes straight up looting, you had to move into the circle. If you moved into the circle, you had to know that the circle was coming. Obviously, you would see where the next circle is. When you saw where the next circle was, you could kind of try to clear out. So the game wasn't so much looting. It felt like loot was there and you wanted as much loot as you could. You wanted to maximize the amount of loot time you could have. But obviously you wanted to kill as many enemies as you could, clear your way to to the circle and get through there. New players, generally speaking, you're going to slowly figure out how to fight the enemies. If you play on the hardest map, you're going to get demolished. If you play on the hard map, you're probably going to get demolished. If you play on the normal map, you might have a chance to learn things. The normal difficulty map um, is probably the most fair, and it was the one that was in the early access build I played, so that seemed to generally be fine. But then all you're going to do is you're going to loot, and because, remember, the circle will cut off very quickly, like 80% of the map. So these maps aren't meant to be... Um, these maps aren't meant to be played on the entire map. There is so much loot on this map that you could generally not use because a circle was pushing you away from it. It was pushing you out of it. You had to take time to clear all the dark corners. You had to take time to clear all the doors. You had to take time to look into the next room, see if there's a group with a ranger about to just shoot you in the face with an arrow. You had to take the time to do all these different things, but now you just loot and you just loot and you just loot. That's it. So, as a new player, am I going to like this experience? No, because what do I do with the loot? I can't even use the loot. So what am I doing? I'm a new player. What am I doing? I'm getting thrown into a game that's just going to mercilessly kill me just on the enemy monsters. If I do get into PvP, you're going to find the PvP is not that engaging either. Some of the newer classes can be fun with some cool spells and things to do like that, but I think most people are gonna just try to play fighter. They're just gonna try to play melee man. Melee man can attack and he can block with his shield. 
His first ability makes him run quicker for like five seconds. His second ability heals him a little bit. That's it. That's your entire gameplay. Attack, block. Now, this isn't even like, let's say, Dark Souls. There's no stamina system or anything like that. So it feels kind of boring in some ways, but it's still kind of exciting because you're getting loot. You're on the lookout for enemies, but two or three hours in, and this is going to start feeling very tedious and boring. I had a friend who was very excited for the game and he got about four hours in before he realized this just sucks. I'm just like, you're not doing anything. You're not achieving anything. You're, you're queuing for a map and then you spend 15 minutes looting and then all that loot goes away. It all goes away and then you have to do it again. What was I doing with the loot? In PUBG or games like that, you generally feel I'm gonna build the best assault rifle and you try to find all the attachments and try to find all the things because you knew that this would allow you to survive because having a really good assault rifle with a really good scope would allow you to survive the circle and potentially win. But there's no longer any winning. Escaping, I guess, is winning winning what loot that you can't use to do what for what purpose what is the end result of this game why are we playing to get to high roller now i do agree high roller can be fun and exciting if the meta and the actual gameplay wasn't abysmal who wants to play a fighter and then run around as a fighter in cloth armor because wearing anything heavier is just going to make you too slow to ever get in range to hurt anybody? That's just not good gameplay. That's not fun. So what do they need to do then to fix this? In my opinion, I, I, would, I would actually recommend a hard reset. I would bring back the 30-minute timers. I would bring back the circle. I would remove the the escapes that are all over the map. I would remove those entirely. I would make people have to play to the circle. I'd have to make people play like that. Uh, I would remove most of the movement penalties from armor. Um, they do seem to want to balance just using the biggest, heaviest armor. But the way they're balancing it right now is really, really bad. I think potentially they could do something like instead of heavy armor slowing your movement speed maybe it should slow your action speed a little bit so maybe if you wear really heavy armor you open chests slower you open doors slower you do things like that slower because then that would make you um you're definitely safer you're wearing heavy armor but now you loot slower and you navigate the map slower so you're always going to be out of position and maybe everybody wears the heaviest armor and is that really a bad thing we're talking about a an escape a, a loot escape kind of game here you don't want people dying very easily with all their their loot i know an escape from targums and games like that you can die and then you lose all your loot because you got headshot but that's just not what this game was trying to pitch itself as it wasn't trying to pitch itself as the hyper adrenaline game of knowing the range and animations on your weapons you could sprint into somebody hit them in the head and one shot them which is fine and in some of these videos you see me one shotting the people without armor but it feels boring and cheesy and lame. I I'm not playing the mid-range and kind of knowing my distance and walking back and forth or blocking attacks. All I'm doing is trying to bait someone into walking into me repeatedly so I can one-shot them. Or walk around a corner and just happen upon someone and one-shot them. That seems to be the majority of the gameplay. There, there really is no fighting anymore. And I, I think that's my biggest problem. I, I played this game for like 16 hours. I can count the big, engaging, fun fights off the top of my head. The vast majority of three-man groups are just running range spam at the moment. Range spam naked people who just run away from you. Um, I, I only ran into a few fighters and barbarians, and I'm talking very, very few, which is weird that so many people would already know the meta, but that seems to actually be what's happening. The vast majority of people I was playing with were just spamming uh, ranged classes and just spamming with ranged attacks. Very rarely did I actually get to melee anybody, which is frustratingly frustrating let's put it that way um anyway i think the timers need to go back to 30 minutes i think that the uh circle needs to come back definitely that one is like a hundred percent true and i think um the armor definitely I, I know i'm just repeating myself here but armor look it's my fantasy to play a high armor character it's not my fantasy for everyone to run up and one shot each other if you're playing a rogue and you're playing a rogue to run up and backstab people that's fine but the entire game shouldn't be balanced around rogues around rangers around wizards it shouldn't be balanced around the squishy people running up and hitting people i think your average player 
as we've seen, wants to wear heavy armor. And why am I playing this game? Why would I not go play Tarkov or other games with very low time to kill, with very easy one-shotting? Why would I not go play those games if they have significantly better combat to begin with? Why would I play this game? And this brings me into probably my last issue. With a lot of strategies revolving around making your character as quick as you can and running into enemies, one problem you might be noticing is the stat checking. See, if I have a longsword, and I'm holding my longsword, no one can see if this is a scarred, or sorry, a scarred, um, um, God, rusting longsword. No one can see if this is a good longsword. Nobody can see if this is the legendary longsword of King Arthur who will one-shot you. There's no difference. Nobody can see me wearing plate mail. They'll think either, oh, he's wearing full armor, he must either be a noob, or that armor rolled such ludicrous stats that if you try to damage me, it will only do like 5% of my health. No in between. So some people might run in and hit me wearing plate mail, expecting me to be an idiot, and then I take no damage, and then I one-shot them. Both these things can happen. Um, if you're playing melee against melee and neither of you has a shield, you can either stay at mid-range and try to poke each other and dance in and out of each other's range, but if your enemy decides to just sprint in melee and hold left click, you can't do anything about it. I can't outplay that. There's no, like, I don't slow them. I don't knock them out of their animation for hitting them. There's no, like, parry. There's no block. There's there's none of this stuff. It's a very bare bones game. So a lot of people just roll the highest damage they can and mo roll the highest movement speed they can assuming they might have the best gear so they can run up to enemies and stat check them and kill them before they get killed and this is just not it's it just the, the more i played it the less entertaining this all became and, and this is just a problem so I, I honestly i'm not even sure how to solve some of these issues definitely there needs to be a different visual to all the different qualities of gear but the problem is i'm not sure they can go through and do that at this stage there's a lot of armor in the game and quadrupling the amount of the amount of models you need by making it so you need to have like rusted kind of clean sparkly or even diamond encrusted plate armor for every single piece of plate armor and every single piece of cloth that might be too much to expect from the developers so i'm not really sure we can expect that from the developers but i just then i don't really see a way around this system if i see an enemy and i see an enemy and I'm, I'm on high roller, and I'm faster than him, I can avoid him, and I can maybe try to poke at him, and I can ch see, oh man, he died, I hit him with a couple arrows and he died, I guess he wasn't doing very good, or I could see, oh man, he, you, you, you kind of get the idea here, it's just like, being ranged, outranging your opponent and outrunning your opponent and avoiding the stat checky melee seems to be a lot of the game, and... A lot of the ways you avoided the stat checky melee were just taking the game very slow and not getting put in that position. But it, it's kind of at the point where, look, the flaws of the game have always been in there, but now they're kind of being exacerbated because the base gameplay isn't fun to begin with. And because the base gameplay isn't any fun to begin with, people are now starting to think like, okay, well, why am I putting up with this extremely boring, lame combat system if the rest of the game isn't fun? Well, the combat system only worked the way it did to basically make it so if you got the drop on someone you killed them so you had to be careful don't get the drop on you there's not much you can do to outplay it if uh if a wizard caught you at range is there much you can do to close the gap well no you, you just got to kind of ambush him you got to play like that right but that that doesn't really work when the rounds are so short you can't do anything like that so the game just crumbled it collapsed it, it's it's a broken game right now. It's just, I'm not having fun with it. And I don't think anyone else is having fun with it. And I could continue to talk about the game and I can continue to talk about the system, but it's just so rare that I actually enjoy the game anymore. I remember back in the preview, even when you could take blues into normal missions and I would fight another character who seemingly had good gear, even if they beat me, I would often think to myself, God damn like you try to swing your attack they'd back off just enough and then they'd start swinging and they'd hit you on the return and you'd go damn and if they did that enough you'd end up dying and you'd be like ah you just sit there so frustrated right but that at least felt like gameplay the situation i'm describing feels like gameplay 
It's not gameplay when I'm running after a ranger who can continue to look back because he's like 20% faster than me and I can't reach him, but because I need to wear heavy armor or I die to his ranged attacks. Like, what What even is this? Or it's not even a ranger, it's druids who have a point and click route for some reason. Or, or warlocks who can just dot you and run away. Everything is just chasing people. Everything is chasing people and everyone's just so goddamn fast. It's not really a slow paced dungeon crawler if everyone's running around so quickly. Anyway, that's the video. That's my rant on all this. I I hope I I legitimately do hope they fix some of this stuff because holy crap, this was actually a game I was looking forward to and I thought it was going to be a very good game. I thought once they added more class specialization, some cooler abilities, mages got way cooler abilities. Uh, melee did not get cool anything. But I thought add some abilities, maybe some special attacks, maybe give like more weapons blocking, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, but, but I thought that would lead to something and, and the game could be good. But no, what, what I'm getting is once again, I'm getting the same Dark Tide. I'm going to continue to use Dark Tide as my boogeyman. It's another game that you thought once they added content could be good, but never seems to actually do much. Now, that's not to say they haven't added content. To the benefit of a doubt to them, they have added a lot of PvE enemies, they have added some bosses, they've added some new maps, and that's cool. That is cool, and I do appreciate that, but the core fundamental of the game, the foundation of the game is broken, and because the foundation of the game is broken, nothing can be enjoyable. So, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, thank you everybody, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.